Welcome to uh, Amazing Minds of your first late night show. Today's Monday show, political segment of the show. If you're not subscribed, please do subscribe. Hit that bell and share. Uh, show is available Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, 20 hours Central African time on YouTube. And the podcast is available on Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify. So Mondays, political discussions. Wednesdays are the educative segment of the show. And Fridays are Bible Talks. We just concluded a series on the gifts of the Spirit this past Friday. Uh, been a long journey. I would encourage you guys to watch that if you are interested in biblical uh, Christian content. How they, are, they are interested. They are interested. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> so I'm I'm here with Mr. Chofire. Yeah. Mm, how are you doing, sir? I'm good, man. How are you? Yeah, blessed young man. <laughs> <laughs> My blessed young man. <laughs> My blessed young man. <laughs> Look at that. Yes. How was your week? That's good. Okay. Yeah, seems like I got a young man, man, man. Young man, you still is it now? No. Can't you see that? Uh, regardless of my age, I still look mm. young. I don't think I'll ever reach a point where I'll be looking no, old. But you're still young, so <laughs> not more come regardless. No, but age. but here's the thing. Mm. Since I was like 16, okay, I've been looking the same. Uh, who, who told you? I just gain a little bit and then lose a little bit uh -huh. and then grow in the image of God and then reduce. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, but... I wish you all the best, man. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, in a hope, guy. I a hope. Uh, serious. Uh, no, for you, you've always looked mature. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> it's a plus like an age can but tell man. The age is running with your hairline. <laughs> There's no going back <laughs> like my hair like. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but you okay? I'm good. And yourself? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. I'm yeah, good. Blessed. <laughs> I was ready for I'm already that. saying I'm a blessed young man. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and how are you guys doing? We're we're grateful to every new subscriber. Uh if you've recently joined the channel, then you're welcome. We are we're glad to have you here. We hope that this video will be better than the one you watched before. Mm -hmm. uh, we are always hoping to improve with every new video. If you've watched from the beginning of, of the show, then you'll be able to see uh, very clearly and evidently the progress that we've made so far. And we hope to keep, you know, we want to be the best doing this thing. We don't want to be amongst the crowd, mm -hmm. if you know what I mean. Yeah, in fact, <clears throat> to me, it seems like we're already the best. People don't just know it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So by the time people are knowing the quality mm -hmm. thereof, <laughs> as the King James would say. It. Uh -huh. Yeah. So today we have a number of topics we're discussing. Oh, this chair feels a little. <clears throat> a little what? A little funny, like shaky. Yeah. So today we have a number Maybe of Maybe it's that time you were talking about two man karachi were losing alcohol, they were gaining alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> nothing to do with that? Yeah, no, nothing to do with that. <laughs> yeah, so we have a number of things to discuss today on the show. To begin with, Zesco to lose $35 million per month due to load shedding. Oh, yeah, way to make us feel nice. <laughs> Osida calls for <laughs> sanctions on HH as they fight their own in-house battles. And uh, thereafter, we'll discuss President HH saying that the government will impose travel restrictions and not sanctions. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> <laughs> and lastly, we'll discuss uh, eight dying after consuming counterfeit beer or alcohol in Kanyama. Yeah, so that's that's what we have lined up for the show today. What do you think about the show today? I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I was following this Osida thing and it was so interesting. Yeah. Almost laughable. <laughs> <laughs> the battle of old men. <laughs> and women. <laughs> and women. Let them, let them leave these things to the youth. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> no, now if I go to the they're also youthful. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> old old in people this country, also, old people also feel youthful. Some somehow. In this country, as long as you feel youthful, it's okay. 
So <laughs> you, it, can do you, you don't have to do. be a youth. You have to feel. feel I, yeah. I guess the global thing. Look at the world leaders everywhere. They are old and frail. Mm, but in each of you, you Yeah. Especially in the free world, America. Mm, Donald Trump and yeah. these are people. And these guys well laugh at us, huh? In their later years, we yeah. are wondering: Are you going to survive the full term of power <laughs> in office? Because. <laughs> The Lord is beckoning. <laughs> Come home. Trump is even better. <laughs> yeah, Trump is better. Yeah. Bi- Biden looks like he's left half halfway <laughs> into the other life. <laughs> Biden and 80 something, 81, 88, 81. 80. <laughs> <laughs> that gap, bro. Yeah, Biden should he's, be 83 between, or 84. He's between 81 and 88. But oh, he's, he's, yeah. a, he's a really old I man. I think he's between 81 uh, and 85. Half, one leg is in the realm of the spirit. <laughs> the other leg is in this life. <laughs> barely yeah. can recognize what's you going see, on. You see, that's why some some countries like the US, they've got serious systems in place. Oh yeah. Because of the president, I'm sure and Ankara gonna get dementia Because yeah. sometimes Nga can bomb Yeah, like he gets he lost. He forgets <laughs> things. What I hate that he forgets uh, the day that his son died or something. He, or he, he his says he's had meetings to... with uh, dead presidents. <laughs> See why I'm saying he's in the room of the spirit. So, <laughs> oh, that too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, 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 I had a meeting with this president, but the man is, is long dead. Okay. Yeah. They were preparing for uh, the apocalypse. Uh, exactly. No, sir, you are dead. <laughs> Halfway. <laughs> prepare for his apocalypse. You're, you're, you're meeting your friends <laughs> who, who went to prepare the way before. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and that's the case in Africa as well. We've got so many old leaders. How old was Mugabe when he... When he was dethroned, they had to force him mm. out of power. Well into his 90s. I yeah. think he had reached the age where he can't be prosecuted for his crimes anymore while still in power. Like mm. he waited <laughs> to get past the age where they can prosecute him before, <laughs> before leaving power. It's it's sad. Yeah. I'm seven is fighting for the same thing. So yeah. Yeah. At least we have now the youngest president. Uh a bit been him been uh, in place because of a military coup. Yeah, Ibrahim Traore. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Still oh, in his status. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Madagascar also had a young president not too long ago. Eh? Okay, is he still the president? The guy who was a DJ. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, uh, speaking of matters to do with Lord Shedding, very important issues right now affecting the country. Everyone is interested to know. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, how yeah. are they following your schedule? The schedule in your in your area. They follow it like three days in a row, consect- uh, well, consecutively. Mm-hmm. And then on the fourth day, they just remind us who they are. <laughs> Zesco. <laughs> <laughs> really? They remind us, no, we are never consistent. <laughs> this is who we are. We can't change. <laughs> yeah. Then they go back to, like they changed our schedule mm-hmm. at home in, uh, at my, my home schedule was changed. Like, how, how do I explain it? We had mm-hmm. power going from, from. From mm, 15, you want to say that? From 15 to 23. Mm. And then... You might they, be giving away your location, bro. Oh, no. The you location the location in which power goes like that is yeah. so vast. Okay. You <laughs> yeah. <think> so? <laughs> yeah. So we had power going at, from, 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 from 15 to 23. And then the day that <coughs> they wanted to change the shift, mm-hmm. power came back at 23. Mm-hmm. And the next day, mm-hmm. power came at... Uh, power went at 05. So what that means is if I, I slept mm-hmm. before 23. Mm-hmm. So when power came, I've got, I've got a, an, an iMac at home. It makes, mm-hmm. <laughs> when it goes on, it makes a loud sound. It woke mm-hmm. me up. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I know, I knew all power has, has, has come back, connected my devices, mm-hmm. went to sleep and woke up to no power. I was wondering, <laughs> ah. <laughs> yeah, thank God for connecting your devices. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, thank God that you thought of connecting the devices. Yeah, thank God. thank God for connecting your devices, you make a rather, that was you. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Yeah. No, we we know you have challenges in one or two. <laughs> <laughs> but it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> Unless you are, unless Vapachania and whatnot. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Where I come from, Nako, she just where I come from, she more. Mm. In fact, for me, ever since they started, it's when I came from Jamu. Really? Yeah. Uh, when it, the day that it started mm. uh, on Monday last week, mm. we had like uh, we had power the whole time. Uh, the second day we had power the whole time. Then the third day, yeah, boy, I ended up as in the first and second day, power didn't go at no, all. No. Nice for us. The- <laughs> <laughs> for us, did it go on the first day? I think it went on first or second day. Okay. I'm, I'm not too sure. Yeah. Okay. Then third day. 
ya boya enda tinangza saina tu ya zambo enda 18 hours ya boya enda 18 hours daba cha after 3 hours so like around 21 ya boya mm. but mm, ha kwa dunia chizungu chizo hey. <laughs> the next day thursday ya boya enda 18 hours but ah but kwa tu ngwa chizungu chizo yeah. mm, my friend Malai tena boy next day 12 hours. <laughs> They compensated for the other day. <laughs> Magic. Wait, what time should power come ideally if it goes at 18? I didn't even at... know there is a schedule like that. What do you mean there's uh, you didn't Like I didn't know there is a shift like that since we've been given shifts to have power. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't know that shift. <laughs> that shift yeah. yeah no, because 18. normally we come but if oh you didn't know that could you in the 18 hours. Yes. Oh okay. When it goes at 18 what time does it come back? So ngati ti adding ti adding it up 8 hours 1920 So it comes back at 02 Yeah fungo bug was 02 For what they might, they might as well take it up to 6 <laughs> <laughs> Oh so I saying they are justified by taking it from 18 to No they are not justified but my point is <laughs> what that shift seems unnecessary they should have made two shifts <laughs> no, for the whole country No I can't say that maybe. also because in the same area there might be some people who might want to do some work in the night Don't you think it would be better to make two general shifts for the whole country? That makes you can it, say that that it, makes it much easier. We we can say that it, it that might be better but then uh it might not fit into the actual schedule because remember lot shading to govern my life. So wafuna uko yaenda uko yabwele. So if mm. one to so have two half, uh-huh. yeah, yeah. So the thing is that eh, they haven't told us whether they can manage which to save is half or to population. sustain half the population yeah, at the same time anyway we'll have some figures here we'll, we'll, we'll look at yeah. but even though their figures are very inconclusive all the mm, time yeah. never Imagine. <laughs> their words are just like a trumpet with no distinct sound <laughs> like you can't interpret it anyway uh minister of Edu- <laughs> we just say minister of education <laughs> <laughs> well, why, why? <laughs> I know right <laughs> was it that man who was on a video call with anyway yeah. let's <laughs> <laughs> oh tell me a PF, yeah, yeah no you remember man. yeah <laughs> minister of energy peter kapala says the current load shedding being experienced in the country will result in zesco losing approximately 35 million US dollars monthly mr kapala said the loss comes as the electricity company <laughs> works on managing the water levels in the reservoirs to avoid long hours of load shedding he said this in parliament when he gave an update on the current electricity situation in the country and outlined measures being implemented to mitigate the impact of reduced electricity supply on the zambian economy in order to reduce rapid down drawdown of the reservoir levels that could lead into longer hours of load shedding zesco has commenced load shedding as a result of the load management and load shedding I don't get what he was trying to say here. Zesco <laughs> will lose uh, approximately 35 million US dollars monthly. Uh say Mr. Kapala. So he told Paul yeah. So first of all, uh, load shedding and load management. You know, nadabo na nwa iba vile mbabo once vile because we have Zesco kwa ndoka mbaba load management to make it sound better. Yeah. yeah. Load shedding sima vika much. Yeah. Then I wanted to tell you about the reading. <clears throat> I hope it's okay. Because I thought I was going to tell you this off the. Like, I know, and I understand what you're about to say, and uh, it's fine. <laughs> yeah. It's fine. We've, how, we've, how did, we've read through the whole thing already. <laughs> we might as well it? just finish. Yeah? How do you know? <laughs> no, because I could hear. <laughs> 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 yeah, I want to tell you about the, the the Bible talks, the way that you read. Oh no! There's a way. No, you do you read, know? Uh, that's not what I thought you were going to talk about. I know. Ap- apologies, I've judged, I know. I judged you. I know. <laughs> yeah, go on. <laughs> There's a way in which you read those Bible passages. Yeah. It sounds authentic, you know. Even if someone is <laughs> listening, they won't know that you are reading. Serious? They might not know that you are reading. Ah, nice. Yeah, if you want them to make them to think that you are just quoting. Ah, they might not know. Nice. There, there's a way that you say it, you know, like Kai, okay, but the, when it comes to reading this, mwa do I it's like you are reading to finish. <laughs> Yeah okay so the punctuation uh-huh. is is a big issue for example uh-huh. the, the usage of words mm-hmm. punctuation they will say things like like this last slide we read mm-hmm. where mm-hmm. where he says uh Zesco has commenced load shedding as a result of load management <laughs> uh, so when i'm reading because i process things as i'm reading so i'm like <laughs> What, what does he mean? <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> you, you understand it? But yeah. the, the Bible is a bit I think if I was reading from a book for example, I'll mm-hmm. read similarly. Oh okay. Mm-hmm. I see. Yeah, but thank you so much. Uh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> He told parliament that according to the data at gauging point, 
Water inflows have, dis- have decreased by 50% compared to the 2022 to 2023 rainy season, as well as to other long-term mean flows. Mr. Kapala said currently Zambia's installed electricity generation capacity is at 3,777.3 megawatts with hydropower accounting for 85%. Questionable, but yeah. Uh, he said the peak demand is estimated at 2,400 megawatts. So peak demand meaning the whole country wanting to use power at the same time. Right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, Mr. Kapala outlined the short-term and medium-term measures that Zesco is considering to improve supply. He said one of the short-term measures is to import between 50 megawatts to 90 megawatts between 21 hours and 05 hours, saying Zesco has started negotiations with Mozambique for an an increase in firm power imports for an additional 120 megawatts. Mr. Kapala said in the medium term, uh, we'll invest in renewable energy expansion projects such as the 120 megawatts solar PV portfolio under the Global Energy Transfer Feed in Tariff uh, program, among others. Yeah, so Mm -hmm. a lot of gibberish. (laughs) Yeah. Trying to make sense out of it. Uh, But do you think they tell us the whole story? Because they give us the numbers, of course, which, as you are saying, they're highly questionable, or sometimes they don't put them in a way that people might really understand it. And then also they they, they they don't tell us about the numbers of the exports, right? Yeah, so they, they, they haven't given us the numbers of the exports. Then mm-hmm. they've told us that powers, Zambia's installed electricity generation capacity, mm-hmm. which means the capacity we presently have due mm-hmm. to our infrastructure in the country, mm-hmm. is able to produce if it was working at its maximum capacity, according to the English anyway. If I interpret it wrongly, then it's the English. No, I uh, think you're right. 3,777.3 mm-hmm. megawatts. Mm-hmm. Um, while the demand comes to, at peak, Mm -hmm. comes to 2,400 megawatts. Mm -hmm. This means we have, uh, well, yeah, we have Mm -hmm. a a very big surplus, like Mm -hmm. seven seven plus six would be uh, about 13, about Mm 1,300 megawatts Mm -hmm. in surplus. Mm -hmm. And they're saying of that 3,700, 85% comes from hydro. Now I say it questionable because do we know of any other form of power that is being produced by either a parastato or the mm. government or Zesco. There are a few actually. Apart from hydro. Yeah, there are a few actually. Okay. Yeah. They call them independent uh, power producers or something like that. Yeah. So there's uh, Yeah, but but are these Zesco? No, or, they're not. Or the government? They're not. They're yeah, not. That's my point. My point is mm-hmm. 85% mm-hmm. of Zambia's uh of Zambia's power generation mm. coming from hydropower, mm-hmm. are they including everyone that produces power in Zambia? Yes, yes. Or they're just talking about Zesco? Because this seems no. to me like a Zesco. Report. No, they, so when Zesco, because Zesco has got this monopoly where there's no one who's producing power and independently sharing it to the people, so to say. Yeah, yeah. All of them have to pass through Zesco. Yeah. So when Zesco speaks like this, they speak even about the private companies. Okay, yeah. so generally the total generation of power that would include copper belt energy, yes. would include yeah, everyone mamba else. Calories. It, it would also include the, the the solar. Yeah, yeah, we've got some small, small solar installations. So or all, small, all that all together comes <laughs> to three thousand seven hundred and. Yes. Okay, makes makes <laughs> makes a bit of sense when you when they put it that way. Except, mm-hmm. if this much power is being produced in the country or is able to be produced in the country, mm-hmm. then are we is Zesco taking full advantage of the 15% to completely purchase it? Which 15%? Oh, okay. So to completely purchase what? Because we know Zesco only produces hydro, right? Mm-hmm. Meaning the 15% that they No, again, taking. we can't say that. We can't say if Zesco is only doing hydro. They could have some solar, solar plants. Is that public knowledge? Yes, but they're just too small, like uh, to add to the national grid to maybe be considered in this discussion. Mm. Yeah, but do, there's do, a small do you get percentage. My, do you get my question, though? <laughs> What's your question? Yeah, what I'm saying is, out of the 85% uh-huh. that's being produced by hydro, yes. are they taking advantage fully of the 15%? Would we know? Okay, so you mean since now hydro is the one that's affected by the rain? Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, that's a good question. I don't even, I don't think I have an answer to that because also you know there are other yeah, issues a, that come. It's in. a rhetorical question, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's part of my my hypothesis on on their report. Okay, the fact, the fact that we are demanding a certain amount which leaves a surplus, mm-hmm. um, that would mean of the fifteen percent, they would mm-hmm. be able to cut off a huge 
amount yeah. in the 2400 required right mm -hmm, mm -hmm. if hydro is where the biggest issue is mm -hmm. and within that we're even exporting mm -hmm. then the question comes in whether they are taking for advantage whether the copper belt energies of this world are mm -hmm. not exporting to anyone else but zesco mm -hmm. okay so if zesco is able to put in place measures where all other people who are generating power whether it's solar or anything else mm -hmm. channel that power towards mm -hmm. zesco so that mm -hmm. they channel it locally mm -hmm. then maybe they can take from the hydro to export does that make sense <laughs> no because hydro is 85 percent so yeah. that 15 percent uh we can't know because uh, zesco is getting everything so whatever they export no that's is not getting everything from the 15 percent we know that copper built energy transport exports energy to countries like ghana right i don't know that but if they do that then they do it through zesco no 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 F to the best of my knowledge not through zesco because they have separate deals these are separate entities yeah of so course zesco has a to the best of my ability with power with locally yeah mm. to the best of my my knowledge uh copper built energy only produces power through zesco so they can't interact with anyone else apart from Zesco. so it's like they're an agent of mm. zesco so what i know is that if we have to export power then cec can do it separately well they can be using their facilities but it's through zesco mm. yeah so maybe you might have knowledge that they, they were exporting or they've been exporting to ghana but most likely that is through zesco mm. yeah Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, but you know, the other thing I'm asking myself is that if uh, if we are saying that if we are saying that our thing, our what's the deficit face? The deficit we are told that it's what? Eh? Because the president said he gave a number. Mm. He said the deficit we are going to lose about eh, uh, 500 megawatts. Mm. Mm. He said 500 something. Okay, let's say 600, give and take. But if we go back to the statement for the president, you see the exact number. It's 500 and something mm -hmm. megawatts. So what doesn't make sense to me is that can't we just absorb that in the in the surplus? Because we already said you said uh, surplus is 13 or uh, 1,300 megawatts. So if you look at the numbers that the president gave us, <laughs> of which if the president didn't give us the right numbers, it means someone is misleading us. Because mm. these guys also, they, they've given us these numbers, of which I believe, because I know that our installed capacity is somewhere 3,000. I know that uh, our, our demand is less than that. Mm. But what I don't get is that the president said, with this whole situation, the only thing that we're going to lose is 500 megawatts. Mm. So you can take out 500 from this, our, our capacity. We we'll still remain with it, enough power to service us at our peak, at our peak hours. Right, because they are saying that at peak the demand is uh, twenty four hundred megawatts. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I hope you're getting me. I do. Uh, the, which brings back my question: mm -hmm. If they're saying eighty five percent comes from hydro, mm -hmm. the only area of power generation that has been affected is yes. hydro. We yeah. have so much of the sun, like we have a surplus of solar being beamed on Zambia right now. Nakukaba. But that quite a facilities, that quite a solar plant. I know, mm -hmm. but we already have a 15% established. So, you know, the thing is that... I, I, I would like you to understand... Yes, I get yeah. it. You know, that 15%, the whole lot of it yes. can be given to Zambian and still are cheap. I know, mm -hmm. but my point is this. Mm -hmm. If you have a 15% mm -hmm. wholly uh -huh. dedicated, we'll be in a better situation. that is not dependent on hydro. Mm -hmm. It is purely dedicated. Mm -hmm. It means from the hydro, mm -hmm. whatever you have that's working, mm -hmm. You can take a portion and dedicate it to Zambia in order to medicate, mit mitigate mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the power deficits. Mm -hmm. And you can now work around exporting whatever is left. So you're agreeing that we would still have a problem, right? But it would be mitigated. I'm agreeing with, uh, we, we may have a problem, mm -hmm. but we may have a more stable base as a country. Mm -hmm. Because if we are relying on the hydro aspect, mm -hmm. this hydro aspect, not only do we have less rain, mm -hmm. we also have exportation. Mm -hmm. We have this, we have that. We have load management in order for equipment to not be, mm -hmm. you, you, you get what I mean? Yeah. But if you have a dedicated 15%, 15% is not a small amount. This is 15% of the total power being generated in the country. Mm -hmm. If I, It's just that we didn't do calculations prior to that. <laughs> we but, should have. But, but 15, we didn't know that but, we're going to have But let's say 15% of, of 4,000 mm -hmm. would come to around uh, 600 megawatts. Mm -hmm approximately yeah so if we had 
let's say 550 megawatts dedicated towards the country mm -hmm. that already covers what we are losing mm -hmm. you understand right yeah then out of the rest we can now dedicate a portion i mean just having a stable base okay I hear dedicated you. entirely to the country mm -hmm. i think that would make sense uh, it would also give us a bringing space. Maybe the transparency mm. with which you know, they are coming out is what's making us mm -hmm. have all these. You know, I'm I, I'm thinking that they're having it difficult. Uh, they're having difficulties to be totally transparent mm. because you see, it doesn't make sense to lay people like me to say that hey, we've got the power deficit, we have got load shedding for eight hours, but we're also exporting power at the same time. Yeah, you know, because out and of also it, out because of you know we've got bilateral agreements. Yes, that you cannot yes, just pull yes. the plug from nowhere. I, I understand that. Mm. I understand that perfectly. That's why it seemed more convenient for me that Zesco would take over the power that's being produced by others within the country to say, you can only dedicate this to us. Mm -hmm. It's like saying you can no longer trade in the dollar within the country, like Sata did one day. Because mm -hmm. whatever is being produced locally, mm -hmm. you have the power over it. But Zesco does have the power. I know, but mm -hmm. I don't know whether they're actually dedicating that 15% okay. to the country. Okay. You understand? With, the, with their power. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So now, with the report they've given us here, not only have they not told us what the deficit is, mm -hmm. uh, they have not broken down certain uh, information to us. For example, if in March, mm -hmm. they're giving us eight hours of load shedding because they don't want us to have longer hours later on. <laughs> 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 Where are they going to get the power that uh -huh. is going to uh, mitigate the loss that we're experiencing right now due to the power we are using? Mm -hmm. I mean, if you are saying we have a limited supply of water mm -hmm. now, we're going to give you eight powers of load shedding now so that you don't have longer. Mm -hmm. Does this mean that from now till the next time it rains, mm -hmm. we're going to consistently have eight hours of no power? Or is there going to come a time when it will be worse, but could have been worse, if we didn't have the eight hours. <laughs> yeah, so the, the other thing that we might not be getting is that uh, when it rains today here, yeah. does not mean that that water will go into the Zambezi River immediately. So yeah, there's a yeah. process which actually takes time. Yeah. Yeah. So I know what you mean like, okay, what, what's going to happen in uh, the dry season? Mm. Since now we have this, but we have still, we've still got uh, rain, but in this time we're having eight hours, is there going to be a time where we might be in a waste situation? But I don't if even, we didn't do the By the way, hours, I'm not even counting the rain that's raining now. Okay. I'm just talking about the statement they've made based mm -hmm. on their own statement mm -hmm. saying, we're giving you eight hours now, so mm -hmm. that it's not worse later. Yeah. The logic behind that statement is questionable. Yeah, it, it is, but you know, for now we can just take the oil for it. <laughs> no, yeah, uh, we can't. Uh -huh. You know why we can't? Uh, why? The, the whole principle of reduced to increase. It comes in here. <laughs> the whole principle of reduced increase comes in here because we need to plan mm -hmm. for the end of the year. Mm -hmm. How are we going to survive? How are our business is going to survive? Mm -hmm. If we are simply being, it's like massaging a wound, uh, like covering a wound that mm -hmm. you have not cleaned up. Yeah, It's going to get worse and develop infections. Mm -hmm. So if businesses right now are working in the hopes that, ah, no, this is for now. Mm -hmm. And then it later gets worse mm -hmm. when they didn't tell us. That it could get worse? Exactly. That it will get worse because they should tell us it will or won't, not mm -hmm. that it could. Do you think they know? I think they should be able to know. They should be in a position to know if we've reached the end of rain season and they are able to determine so the water see, level. If, if it was like that, why weren't we informed that we're going to have this issue? It, it my just question, came abruptly. My question, exactly. <laughs> my question, okay, can you at least agree with me that the report that they've given here says a lot without saying a lot. Of course, that I totally agree. There, there is a lot of stuff that they've put there, mm. which you need dots to connect. And let's not forget that this was said on the floor of parliament. Yeah. And I always keep on saying, these are kind of the kind of jokes that are going on in our parliament. Yeah. Because no one even questions this, these things. So the minister will be there giving a ministerial And now they want so to control, control the podcasts that are questioning. <laughs> oh, that's... Yeah. <laughs> Do we have that in the, in the show? The show? Uh, no, not, <laughs> not today. We are waiting oh. to see the... <laughs> but they want to control the podcasts. <laughs> By the way, which are not hosted locally. <laughs> Imagine. We are posting this stuff to foreign hosts <laughs> and they somehow feel... Anyway... <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> yeah, that would be interesting <laughs> to talk about in this show. I know. I, I would yeah. have a lot to say about. <laughs> I'm waiting for that time. 
Yes, so, so it's 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 very questionable stuff yeah. uh, that they are giving us. Yeah, we spent 30 minutes. We have? Oh. Talking about this. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a big issue in the country. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah, it's a good discussion. Uh, yeah, mm. yeah. Uh, I've heard of Osida and what's mm. what's been going on. Battle of the old men. Yeah, and women. <laughs> I knew you were going to have that. <laughs> yeah, don't forget the women. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. All right. On a disrespectful note, uh, Hichile Mam Samba Muti Malila Mwimbo may face USA sanctions. Travel bans. Well, this wasn't <laughs> necessarily accurately reported because the USA has not responded to this. Osida petitions USA to impose sanctions on Hichilema, Chief Justice, Police Chief, Speaker, and Home Affairs Minister. In an unprecedented bold move, prominent Catholic Archbishop Telesfo, is this Telesfo? Yes. Yeah, Telesfo Mpundu has petitioned the United States government to impose financial and travel sanctions or bans on the president of Zambia and other top government officials for flagrant violations of human rights that are eroding uh, democracy in the Southern African country. Before I go further, mm. sir, have you been watching the news? The U.S. is busy <laughs> right now. <laughs> like honestly speaking the US is busy right now they are in the thick of things with the Ukraine Russia war uh with the economy with Plus the debt with the debt they have the elections yeah. that they have mm. with uh Donald Trump being taken to court here and there they are telling him oh here you might not be able to stand for like they've got a lot on their plate right now for you to bring such a petty issue <laughs> it's a petty issue i think it is okay moving on in a statement signed on behalf of Osida, an influential civil society group in Zambia, addressed to Michael Gonzalez, U.S. Ambassador to Zambia, the respected emeritus clergy said, apart from President Hichilema, the Speaker of the National Assembly, Nelly Muti, Chief Justice Mumba Malila, Inspector General of Police, Grafayo Musamba, and Home Minister, who I, I assume this is the Home Affairs Minister, mm. Jack Mwimbu, must be punished following rising abuses of rights onto the people of Zambia. Osida therefore petitioned the United States government to impose financial sanctions, visa restrictions, and travel bans against top government officials undermining democratic rights in Zambia. The civil rights group accused uh, Mr. Hichilema of restricting public assembly, free association, uh, free association expression, delayed justice, and weaponizing the electoral commission of Zambia. Uh, police and pa police and parliament, you see, punctuation, mm -hmm. <laughs> with the sole aim of suppressing Zambians. Uh, the director of public pr prosecution, Gilbert Piri, has also come under fire for failure to prosecute cases that involve members of the ruling party and prosecuting mostly cases involving the opposition, especially those involving members of the previous administration of sixth president of Zambia, Edgar Lungo, the PF. There is a great, there's growing concerns among political pundits that Zambia's credentials as a growing African democracy have eroded since Mr. Mr. Hichilema assumed office and banned all public rallies organized by the opposition after promising maximum freedom while in opposition. The instruction came from IG Musamba. Um, why this for me is a, pe a petty issue, I won't say pretty. Why this for me is a, is a petty issue is yeah. because uh, First of all, we have a lot of more pressing issues happening in Zambia. Uh, secondly, I don't know whether dealing with our in-house issues is best. Um, the best way to deal with our in-house issues is by involving the United States government to come and be a referee locally, when we should have established institutions in the country that should be able to deal with those grievances. And if we don't have such establishments within the country, then there should be room for the creation of such an establishment. Because for us to consistently depend on the United States to come and solve our in-house problems seems counterproductive for me, especially at times when they are busy. Like now, I don't know what you think. <laughs> yeah, I think a lot, bro. Yeah. Yeah, first of all, I don't think that this is a petty issue. Yeah. Uh, that we are going to the United States and saying, because these guys have been problematic in our country, our leaders, yeah. so you need to sanction them from maybe traveling and all those uh, whatever economic sanctions. Uh, I might not agree with that route that was taken, 
But the fact that we have this problem, freedom of expression, you just spoke about the the restriction of podcasts, so they want you to be licensed now, they want us to be licensed mm, now. Mm. Uh, By the way, we're not a so, podcast, we're late night show. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so to say that uh, we've got bigger problems, well, we could have problems, but these two are big problems. Since Grafe Musamba, the, the, the police IG came in place, there's... The opposition have never been able to hold uh, public rallies or yeah. any public gatherings. What they do now is press briefings. Yeah. So they want to have a rally, they'll be stopped. In uh, On 8th of October last year, there are some group of youths uh, that wanted to have a march, like a protest. Mm. They were cornered by the police. They informed the police way beforehand, and the police kept on saying no. Mm. And in fact, this inspector general is on record saying that eh, we will not allow all those uh, public rallies for the opposition until it's campaign time. <laughs> and these are people who say that they are going to get rid Just of this. Just move your mic a bit further. Okay. <laughs> 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 when I start speaking like that, Sorry. I know what's going to happen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Then this guy, HH, was also saying the same thing. Yeah. Because he got emotional. There was a time actually he was stopped. From uh, he was stopped at the airport in uh, in Chipata. I remember. Yeah, and that has happened to him a lot of times. There's a famous picture. Yes, and the police he always use the Public Order Act. Yeah, himself HH stood and said, "We're going to get rid of this piece of legislation, or we're going to work on it." Now they are almost three years in office, and mm-hmm. they are using the same piece of legislation now to stifle the other people who are talking. <laughs> okay. So you know yeah. this letter that was done by. Uh, uh, from Pundu. It's a long one. So when it speaks about someone, by the way, uh, I know that if you if you look at the first slide, the DPP was not mentioned there, but of course later on he was mentioned. But of course he's uh, one of those people. Mm. There's also ECZ uh, chairperson, mm-hmm. yeah, Mangala Zalomis. I don't know if she was if she was talked about here. Yeah. So anyway, what is talked about in that letter? Everything I think that is justifiable. Mm. Yes, we 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 are going down the drain. Mm. The UPND, when they came here, we felt like we well, have now a better space. But every day it's shrinking. Yeah. Yeah. This, by the way, the UPND always say, no, the democratic space is not shrinking because they are comparing it to the time of the PF. No, you can't be comparing yourself to failures. Yeah. The UPND, when they came in, we felt this sigh of relief. Yeah. But now we're going back to the PF days. Yeah, but did we ever call on the US? Did, did we, we ever? Did we ever get a letter from OSIDA calling for the US to intervene during PF? Okay. Uh, so, by the way, OSIDA was formed, uh, and later on we'll see that uh, these guys probably their agenda is not really for this. Anyway, their agenda might be political. <laughs> yeah, okay. He, here's my, but, my, my uh-huh, issue. Uh-huh, you know, I uh-huh. know you are, you're raising a lot of good uh-huh, points. Uh-huh. I do not dismiss the issues, uh-huh. especially when it comes to uh, issues to do with free speech. Uh-huh. I do understand how things work in this uh-huh, country. Uh-huh. They have worked the way they are working today uh-huh. since uh-huh. The, the first government. Uh-huh. And we shouldn't accept that as Yeah, we, we, we don't have to accept it, uh-huh. except we also know that the country we are calling upon uh-huh. is not perfect in this area. No, in fact, it might be worse. Exactly. Yeah. So the country we are calling upon to give us a solution mm. has the same problem, if not worse. Mm-hmm. Uh, you see, I'm not into the whole thing of going to the Americans. If you notice, I said that yeah, in the yeah, first place. Yeah. Yeah. And for me, the reason why I consider it a petty issue is because if it was serious enough, mm-hmm. the right channels would have been followed. And there's a reason why everyone on mm-hmm. his own boat mm-hmm. has jumped out. <laughs> what would you agree to be the right channel? Use the established powers in the country. To, to address the what parliament, powers? the parliament, the legal systems. So you see, the people we, that, we know that, for example, uh, in we, parliament, don't forget that the speaker has been cited. I know, uh-huh. I know the speaker has been cited, uh-huh. but, but my, so who can you run to if you are citing the speaker? The, the legal citing the police. So 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 the so the government maybe so the police. We are allowed to do that. There's a chief justice. There's a DPP who can actually <laughs> stop that matter. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway see, see why it's not easy for Osida to solve this problem yeah, so let the, them forget about it <laughs> so the channel might not be right but I must say it raises very good points yeah yeah which we should actually look at critically as a nation yeah because we see this every day we saw how Sean Tembo has been treated by the police themselves <laughs> we saw how Chilifia Taali was being treated oh they deserve it I'm joking <laughs> yeah of course you can say that because yeah. these people are very antagonistic yeah, as well yeah, yeah. yeah but you know it's it's only a matter of time before now they start going for those who don't deserve it in inverted commas amazing minds yeah so <laughs> <laughs> State House responded to these uh, uh, 
uh, these these issues. Uh, State House has described a, purport, a purported statement written by our Civic Duty Association, or CIDA Chairperson Archbishop Telesfo Mbundu, as a collection of falsehoods, <laughs> generalizations, uh, providing no specific evidence, and being utterly malicious. Yesterday, a document was published, uh, this was the other day, urging the United States government to impose financial sanctions, visa restrictions, and travel bans against President Hakainde Hichilema and several top Zambian officials who are allegedly undermining democratic rights in the country. The said petition is alleged to have been signed by Osita Chairperson Archbishop Teles Fompundo, who seems to be the only one. However, State House Chief Communications Specialist Place on Hamasaka doubts the authenticity of the statement, adding that given the advanced age of the Archbishop, <laughs> I know it is doubtful that he would be so detailed and aware of the context and motives. All right, so yeah, um, yeah the State House has <laughs> State House has disputed. It's not funny, by the way. It's not supposed to be funny, but uh, <laughs> apparently they doubt the authenticity of this <laughs> <Give it. laughs> of this <laughs> statement, given the age of the man in question, Mr. Ateles from Pundu. He is yeah. too old to be able to contextualize what is Archbishop in this statement. Uh, what, what did I call him? Mr. Oh, uh, Archbishop. <laughs> what is uh, yeah, Arch, by the way. Arch, Archbishop mm. Teles from Pundu mm. uh, is too old, apparently, to... To articulate these matters, to mm. contextualize and and mm. whatnot. Mm. Wow, way to respond, eh? Yeah. By the way, Teles Fompon was the was like the, the 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 what what can I say? So Catholics have got the CCB, yeah, which they call Zambia Catholic or Zambia Conference of Catholic Bishops. Okay, it's like the highest body for for Catholic priests, and this man was their leader. Oh, okay. So that man was like the de facto leader of the Catholic in Zambi Catholics in Zambia. Yeah, yeah, just recently. Mm. Yeah, so he just retired. Maybe that's why they are talking about retiring. Okay. Yeah. I want you to play this, then I'll, I'll say more about him. <laughs> yeah, so Mr. Wrote. Cornelius Muetwa uh, also weighed in on the matter. As he should. <laughs> <laughs> As he should. Eh? <laughs> yeah, Mr. Cornelius Muetwa weighed in on, on the matter. Of love and unity and tolerance for coexistence in society has offered and rendered himself as a template of political hatred in the country. A number of statements that he has issued in the past are devoid of the love and tolerance that we expect that he must exude as a man of God. Rather, he has positioned himself as one to be used as a catalyst and agent of division and misinformation in the country, which is very, very unfortunate. What are your thoughts? Mm. So, <laughs> the way the, the way he's speaking now, uh, I don't know. He said something like he's been used or mm, something mm, like that. Mm. Yeah. By the way, there's Brave Nacha. You said that you only seen Teles from Pundu. Yeah. There's also Brave Nacha and Gala, I think it was. In now also, of this. take note that a lot mm. of what I'm saying is jokes, comedic. <laughs> <Okay>. we're, <laughs> we're keeping with the theme of the show, just <laughs> so course. they don't take everything too seriously. <laughs> by the way, please do subscribe, hit that notification bell, and share. Show is available Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, 20 hours Central African time. And yeah, Monday, <laughs> political segment. Yeah. So I must be very honest that uh, first of all, I've got some great respect for the Les from Pundu. Yeah. And not because he's a Catholic or he used to be a Catholic leader or anything like that, but it's in the way that he's been, he's carried himself. Yeah. Since time immemorial. So he's been sort of a civil rights activist as well. Mm. He's been speaking out on these issues. And uh, to me, what I like most about him is that he sometimes talks about things that are unpopular. So uh, maybe the people should be reminded, especially UPND supporters and these UPND leaders, because I'm seeing that actually what uh, the State House official said, it was quite insulting, <laughs> you know? About his age? Yeah. Mm. Of course, uh, uh, you know, he might be right in some way mm. because, you know, there's a lot of things that come comes with old age. Mm. Yeah. But if someone has got a health problem and they've been diagnosed, 
then maybe we can talk about it. But to, to, to suggest that someone said something because they are aging. And he's mm. not too old, by the way, the man. Mm. Yeah, that, that would be a bit insulting to me. Mm. This is a man, Teres from Pundu. This was the man who stood up for HH the time that he was incarcerated in Cabo. This is a man that famously came out and spoke against the PF during the time that UPND was sort of being persecuted. And to these people, Cornelius Muento himself, I actually heard him saying that this is someone with integrity. We had the, the UPND supporters because, you know, at that time when he was saying that, he was so unpopular with the PF. So the PF, of course, were coming out to say, no, you are being used. The same thing that these guys are playing to. No, you are being used mm. by the opposition. And the UPND supporters, and because I've seen the UPND supporters insulting him actually right now. Mm. More than saying that he's old age and what, what they are actually outrightly insulting him. Yeah, I wish we had a clip of him actually saying these words so we could have seen how TikTok would have reacted to it. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, we could find one, actually. We could? Mm. Yeah, but they are doubting that he made the statement, meaning there's no video, probably. Which statement? The statement itself, they're saying we're yeah. doubting his own made it. Oh, own. okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, because it's a written. So there, there's no, uh, yeah. I thought you were talking about the, the time that he, uh, UPND was in opposition. Uh, no, 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 no. No, this time he mm. didn't say anything. Yeah. There's just a written statement. It's actually very long because mm. for every individual, they say. So, so do you think there's a possibility that he is not the author of the statement, but they're just using his name? It's possible. It's yes, possible. unfortunately, it's possible. So do you also think that the fact that he, the site, the, mm -hmm. the age they've cited mm -hmm. could legitimately be a reason why the statement could not be coming from him. No, but we can't say that uh, before we know anything else. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> maybe, maybe they know something we don't. I doubt that. Yeah. Yeah, I doubt that. Yeah, but that's a possibility, as I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but you know, because he signed the letter and is it still the same person? Because the way that he, 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 he used to be vow like this. Yeah. You know, he used to say things that people don't want to say. So the way that this letter came out, Everything is written on the wall that this is him. Mm, mm. And he signed it. Mm. So for now, I refuse to take it like uh, maybe people are using him or something. Because if I start doing that, I'll be playing into the same hands of the UPND yeah. who are saying that it's being used. Yeah. Yeah. I believe we should look at this the way it, it's presented unto us. And if he's been used, I'm sure things will come out. But then also, of course, there's uh, this issue of uh, his fellow Osida people, the, the other faction of Osida, <laughs> <laughs> like uh, sort of downplaying what yeah, he did yeah. or saying that he wasn't representing them. Yeah. And also there's a Brebna Changala who Osida does not like. Mm. They say that he sort of imposed himself on the group and blah, blah, blah. That's another issue. Yeah, but anyway, but my I, point is that yeah. these politicians, this is very telling that uh, they can switch anytime. As long as you are saying things that they don't like, they'll switch. So let's not trust them. When they say that they are going to get rid of the Public Order Act, let's not trust them. When they say they are going to get rid of the, the Cyber Security and Cyber Crimes Act, immediately they come in power, uh, let's not trust them. Because, you know, these are the same laws that are now being used against the other people who have been critical of the government. Mm -hmm. I don't know if, because now the, the, that ZCCB, the Zambia, Catholic, um, Zambia Conference of Catholic Bishop, has got a new leader who is uh, Alec Banda. Mm. And the UPND, there was a voice recording that was going around in their group. There was something that happened. Uh, I don't know if you remember that uh, priest who talked about mm. You remember that? Look at yeah, that. I think I do. Yes, after that, there was, because, you know, the Catholics sort of just want to be neutral and they want to speak for the people. Mm. So there was a time that there was a voice note going around of the UPND Secretary General talking about the Catholic bishop, who is now their leader in Lusaka, the Lusaka Archdiocese has been the devil, the Lucifer of Zambia. <laughs> and if it was another person, that person would have been cited for a hate crime using the Cyber Security and Cyber Laws Act. Mm. But now it's working for them. Anything that's against them, they can't use it. Yeah. Anything that is, uh, anything that's against them, they use it to suppress the other person. Mm. Anything that, uh, if they violate it themselves, it's another story. Mm. Yeah, so we are seeing these things that are being talked about. Yeah, and we can keep on talking about them. There was a recording that went round of uh, uh, someone who was trying to stop Harry Calabas' party. So there was a conversation at, uh, between a state house official and uh, a, a permanent secretary in the Ministry of Home Affairs. We heard that uh, they someone the journalists who shared that, the KBN journalists, mm. using the, 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 the Cyber Security and Cyber Crimes Act. 
that they said they will repeal immediately they come into power. So now to shield themselves, they're using the same law. <laughs> <laughs> so this is what I'm saying. We can't trust them. Yeah. Mm. It's crazy. Um, similarly, travel, <laughs> very funny, Tra- travel bans have been promised, or let me not say travel bans, but restrictions. travel restrictions have been promised by uh, the president. Republican President Hakainde Hichilema says travel restrictions will be imposed to all government workers. This is amidst the drought situation, which has been declared as a state of emergency. Mr. Hichilema says there is need to mop up money from other consumption-related expenditure in, 2020, in the 2024 national budget. He was speaking during a swearing-in ser- swearing ceremony at State House. Ooh, what was that? Those mm-hmm. sworn in include Speaker of the National Assembly, Nelly Moti, and Home Affairs and Internal Security Minister, Jack Mwimbo, at State Councils. And this was his speech. And travel. By the way, with the declaration of the national disaster and emergency, we are going to curtail your travel and that of your civil servants. The Secretary of Cabinet knows. And I must say that includes not just the civil service, it includes the two arms of government, Speaker. It includes Parliament. You have to curtail the traveling yourself and your members of Parliament so we can save money and put it in food to protect citizens so they can have food as they go to bed. I'm serious. Vice President, there's a perception that lingers on that because there's a separation of government, three arms of government, means that uh, the judiciary and legislature is not bound by prudence measures. That is too far from the truth. You are all bound by those measures because we are one government. Uh. Yep, so we agree with uh, the prudence measures the president is trying to bring in, I think those are very admirable measures, except it's better to bring in these measures before the state of emergency. <laughs> I think we should have thought about how to provide food for people prior to this need. And I've always been saying it, the government should find ways to at least uh, mitigate people's food and accommodation needs. Mm. That way we have a more productive country, that way we have more people working for other things other than food, which helps productivity. Because if people save up money for other ventures, then less people will actually need jobs because they are eating mm-hmm. and they have where to stay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know what you think. Yeah, I'll speak of what he actually said. You know, it's, it's hard for me to take him serious because, and he said I'm serious, <laughs> <laughs> ironically. Pun intended. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, because uh, I saw his, his so address when he was doing all those things. And, you know, uh, funny enough, this is the same day that those people took that letter to, or Sida took the letter to the American embassy. Yeah. It is the same time that, uh, uh, that, sorry, it's the same time that those guys, some of those guys that have been cited were been because this was like an award Th- ceremony. There was a swearing in, yeah. Yeah, they were making mm. them state council. Mm. Yeah, those Nelly Mutis of this yeah. world, uh, yeah. Jack Mimbos of this world. Yeah. So it's kind of funny. But that. don't you think also that state house response could be a bit justified in the timing? The fact that the president is just from saying you guys are no longer going to travel mm. because of the drought. Mm-hmm. People are a bit irritated. Mm-hmm. People had planned for allowances. Mm-hmm. And then you bring in an issue saying no, America. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you know, he, he fell short of mentioning himself. Huh? Uh, he, say, he should have said because he's, he's famous or infamous for moving around a lot. Yeah. Yeah. This man has traveled more than Edgar Lung. Oh, yeah, Mr. Edgar uh, Lung was there seven uh, years. Mrs. Uh, is she Miss or Mrs.? Uh, we played her last week. What's her name? FTD. Mm-hmm. Um, it did not work. Yeah, mm-hmm. it did not Is she Miss or Mrs.? I don't know. Because I remember last week I was saying oh. both Miss and Mrs. <laughs> yeah. So it, it did not work. We. Accused could be Mrs. Nawaku. Uh, yeah? It could be she could be Mrs. Nawaku. Mrs. Eh? Yeah. yeah. So she accused the president of consistently making trips. It's funny that this thing comes up. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. So I think he fell short of mentioning himself. He should have stayed by himself as yeah. an example. Because it's like he was pointing at the civil service, <laughs> your civil servants, no more trips. Again, also you, Parliament, the Speaker. Hmm. All, the, all these bodies, legislature, uh, judiciary, <laughs> so maybe no Mr. trips for you. He was like saying, no trips for you. So Mr. Mpundo was trying to include him in the... <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah, supposedly Mr. Mpundu is too old to understand this. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> yeah, in in concluding the show today, uh eight people have passed away in Lusaka's Kanyama compound after suspectedly consuming poisonous alcohol. Police are investigating a case of suspected poisoning in which eight people are believed to have died after consuming suspected counterfeit beer. The report of deaths have been reported in Lusaka's Kanyama compound where Rainford Banda, age 23, of Makeni Villa and, Stanf- and Sanford, Mumba, age 26, of John Lang, John Lang uh, compound died, <laughs> <Quite John Lang. laughs> uh, died in unclear circumstances after consuming suspected counterfeit beer. Police investigations have revealed that six other persons died in separate incidents at unknown dates and time within Kanyama compound as a result of drinking beer, drinking the same suspected counterfeit beer. Uh, Brief facts around Rainford and Sanford's deaths are that on March 7, 2024, around 20 hours, the two were seen drinking at a named beer uh, a named beer at a named bar within Kanyama compound. And around 22 hours, they both went to their homes in Kanyama and John Lang compounds, Lange. or John Lang <laughs> compounds, respectively. Investigations indicate that Rainford reported to his family members that he was feeling weak. Maybe didn't it? He slept <laughs> and yeah, was reported and was reportedly failing to wake up until his condition got worse on March 8, 2024. Around 20 hours, around 20 hours, he was rushed to Kanyama Level 1 Hospital where he died receiving while receiving treatment. The deceased was buried on Sunday, March 10, 2024, after postmortem uh, examination was conducted at the University Teaching Hospital. Police investigations further revealed that Sanford Mumba also died on March, March 8, 2024, and Preliminary postmortem results for both indicate that they died due to poisoning. Samples were collected and subjected to further forensic examinations. Further investigations have revealed that the said beer is produced within Kanyama compound, and investigations have been intensified to establish the source. Now, this is strange for Kanyama. We're used to hearing such stories about Matera. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Leave Matero after this. <laughs> yeah, apparently, they have uh, production houses in Matero where yeah. they produce degrees. So Kanyama and, is copying. <laughs> yeah, and Kanyama is now copying. They are starting. A- except, the... except with Kanyama, people are dying. <laughs> They've not learned how to mix. <laughs> yeah, how to mix the ingredients properly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry about that, by the way. But you know, this just spills out the dangers of taking. Uh, this alcohol that we don't know where it's coming. Yeah, no, no, from. alcohol generally, alcohol. Yeah, but if you want okay, to drink, okay. I mean, just know where it's coming from and know that it's authentic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's avoid things like to majunta. Yeah. To majunta so is so far in the past three weeks, we've tackled mm. how many things within the drinking space. Mm. Got meat, <laughs> which has been verified is now dog meat. <laughs> and alcohol has been verified to be produced within Kanyama. <laughs> So give your life to Jesus. <laughs> Follow Bible Talks. Anyway, that was me advertising Bible Talks. But by the way, do catch Bible Talks every Friday, 20 hours. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So And avoid Junta. <laughs> <laughs> avoid Junta. Eh? Yeah. yeah. Uh, this fight against Junta has been has been there for, for years now. It yeah. started with Tujili Jili. Mm. Then went to... Yeah. I, I, I think yeah. the more that we speak about it, the more that people get sensitized. Because the truth is that the way they make those things, you know, by the way, I've been to a place where they make junta in Matera. Oh, okay. Yeah, a very long time ago. Yeah. It's something else. Did you partake? <laughs> <laughs> that was the day that I stopped. Oh, wow. After I saw that. Serious? Yes. What about and the process? Anyone who's what about enough? the process? You see, the process is not like the process of creating actual liquor with the uh, regulated alcohol and blah blah blah. No, in fact, it's it's mostly not alcohol. The other drugs that we're taking. So it just it's like there is no fikola. percentage. So nga wambo nga wamo na fidero mbwa ra ishwa abajun tawara korokwa tango vebi san vambi wara bede. They are addictive mm. and all those things. Yeah, for me immediately I saw that. I've never Nicaragua mapo junta for I don't know if it's six years now or something. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. What do you think about the show? I think it's good. Yeah. Yeah. Podcast. Yeah. No mukare kef. I be active. How's how's that, how's that whole case going? By the way, I think there is one podcast I have in mind. 
Mm-hmm. That anyway, I won't say is a target because mm. uh, it's, alle- it's, it's alleged. Manyo Mamba. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, a lot of people are saying that actually. A lot of people are saying yeah. that. Yeah. Eh? And it, it 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 wouldn't be surprising. Anyway, we are here to save you. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Mwamba, it's good that you started a podcast. Yeah, because you have come into the winning league. Yes. What we are going to do, Mr. Mwamba, <laughs> is to bring you into safety. <laughs> Don't worry about all that's going on. Mwabisa. <laughs> we can read. That's what's important. And we can speak. Any man that can accurate, <laughs> accurately. Accurately. <laughs> any man that can accurately, uh-huh. or woman, Read and speak. I don't like the way you said, or oh, woman, like, like, oh, so there's also. No, because uh, when I say man, I mean everyone generally, but. Uh, but so why they, did you say it, a woman? It, because I thought you would say it. <laughs> <laughs> I was preventing it coming from you. <laughs> yeah, any man or woman that can read and speak accurately is dangerous because you can't just muzzle them. Yeah. It's, it's not possible for someone who has understanding to just be muzzled. They will put up a fight. Mm. They there will. Are lot, there are a lot of ways to do these things. Yeah. Mm. There are a lot of ways, especially if you're not being... Anyway, uh, let us not... <coughs> <laughs> Step on the lion's tail. <laughs> <laughs> Don't poke the bear. <laughs> yeah. Mwanzi, we're not afraid of anything. You know? Oh, no, no. IBA no. Act, come. We want to deal with that. We planned for this. Yeah. Cornelia before, Smueto, huh? before starting the we show. We want to deal with the people like you. Yeah. Before starting the show, we planned for this. <laughs> so bring it on. <laughs> yeah. Please do subscribe, hit that bell, and share. Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays, uh, 20 hours Central African time. We'll see you on the next one. Ciao. Ciao. <laughs> hey, like what you see? I know you do. Hit the button below to subscribe and don't forget to hit the notification bell. Ciao.